Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is VXY Voltage, and I'm giving you another Code Geass Nightmare frame review. But this time I'm going to be something a little bit different. We're not going to be looking at um, Robot Damashi Spirits or any of the old in-action offshoot figures. This time we're going to be taking a look at the Bandai Mechanical Complete Model Lancelot Conquista. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, Mechanical Complete Model, I've never heard of this line. Well, quite frankly, I don't blame you, my friend, because this line is actually just a rehash of Bandai's buildable model kits, meaning that this figure is actually a completed, pre-painted, pre-assembled, all that jazz figure of the buildable Conquista model kit. A bit strange, but I can kind of understand why they did this. Um, there are some people like myself who kind of just like to have their figures ready to go out of the box to display and do all of that fun stuff. Um, the line only has two figures I checked. There's this, the Conquista, and then the Lancelot Air Cavalry. So it was specifically just for those two models. I haven't found anything else um, since. Uh, but we're going to take a look at this together and see if it holds up. Let's see if it is the end-all Lancelot Conquista figure. So we'll take a look at the box here first. The box design I actually really, really like for this. You've got the various kind of golden accents going around throughout the box. You've got the name and everything there in your logos. You've got a picture of Suzaku there in his Knight of the Round uniform. We turn it to the side. You can see that uh, it's got the name there. The, and it's also got the, oh, the height and weight specifications. That's very, very nice. I did not notice that. And a pre-rendered uh, CGI picture of the Lancelot. You can see it shows you all the various product photos and what you're getting on this figure. And it shows you that it's got detail. It's got the opening cockpit with a minifigure, the rear foot unit. Uh, it's got openable land spinners and everything. This just looks like a really good figure, honestly. So enough about the box, even though it is a very nice and very unique box. I'm probably definitely going to be keeping this like my other boxes. Let's actually crack open this figure and see how the Mechanical Complete Model series holds up. Uh, further proof that this is adapted from the model kit. I got found this manual and it very much resembles um, model kit instructions there. And you can even see it comes in the... Uh, plastic seams that you've got to pick them out of in there. This shows you what to do and uh, where everything goes. And then here you've got a little more detail showing you what the figure does and all that jazz. So yeah, basically a model kit uh, instruction booklet. And here is the Lancelot Conquista all out of its box and ready to go. And after fidgeting around of it just to get it ready for the review, Ah, uh, my feelings on it are mixed, but I'll explain those as I go along. Now, the detailing and sculpt in this figure, honestly, is the seller for me. It looks great. It's a really nice recreation of the second iteration of the Lancelot that uh, Suzaku got when he became uh, knighted around. And they've done a great job. There is detailing packed throughout this figure. You can see on the front here, there's various panel lining and grooving going along. Uh, you look up in the chest here, there's even detail in there. Uh, let's see, it's just, it's really, really nice. Just detail for it. The cockpit has some nice panel grooving and lining going on. At the back as well, you can see just the amount of just detail they've packed into the sculpt. It's really, really good. You see these um, markings on the legs. And on the feet, it's got some detail as well, as well as an extra little wheel uh, just on the toes. And it's just really, really nice. It looks like the Lancelot Conquista. There's not really much more uh, I can say about that. It's really, really nice. And the paint apps uh, is only really for the golden accents you see throughout the figure. The white is very much just a solid uh, mold plastic, but it's actually really nice. Although you can definitely tell it's... Um, recycled from the model kit because it kind of has that um, glimmer in the light right now. It's probably not showing up too well on the camera but I can actually see it very very clearly. Um, so you can tell it's definitely reusing some parts from the original model kit but other than that it's really really nice. I'm 100% on board with this sculpt. Uh, certainly a lot better than what the in action offshoot figure was offering in terms of just sheer detail. Moving up closer to take a little look at the head, it's not that bad, all things considered. It captures the basic look of the Lancelot, but there is some areas that I 
feel could have been improved. For example, these two um, kind of side pieces here, I feel they could have just trimmed them off a little bit. They are a little bit big, uh, but you can see the eyes in there. It's not showing up too well on the camera, but there is some green eyes in there. Take a look at the back of the head. There's some uh, nice sculpt work going on in the back of the head as well, but it does capture the um, Lancelot head pretty well. Not um, super amazing like the Robot Damashi Lancelot, which is the newer um, figure. It's all right for what it is, considering that this is um, a pre-built model kit. It's not that bad, honestly. I, I'm giving it a solid pass. And one of the unique features of this figure being a model kit is that it actually has the openable cockpit and you can see some very nice control panel work in there, the screens, the console controls, buttons, everything. It just looks really, really good. And of course the seat does um, slide out there. You can just push it back in. It's a little bit stiff, but you can actually push it uh, in there and close up the cockpit. But that's some really, really nice uh, detailing, obviously. You do actually get a little minifigure to put in the cockpit, so it makes sense uh, when you open up the cockpit to have those interior details in there. Uh, but that's really, really nicely done. And I wish more of the Nightmares from Bandai actually had this, because the cockpit, seeing cockpits in any sort of mech is just really, really nice. Really, really like that feature. Now take a look at the Conquistos articulation. This is the part of the review where it kind of goes a little bit yeah. So let's take a look at the head first. The head, pretty decent range of motion considering the uh, sculpt. You've got full range of 360 movement, uh, side to side, swivel. Can look up about that much, can look down about that much. And then obviously as you saw, it tilts side to side. Uh, that's a double ball joint from what I can feel. So, pretty decent range of movement on the head, considering the rather uh, bulky design. Shoulder, big ball joint at the connecting part. The shoulder armor is not on a hinge, like uh, most Nightmare Frame figures, so you can't actually move the shoulder armor on its own, you have to move it with the arm. There is a swivel in the actual bicep. Turns pretty well. And then the elbows, don't appear to be double jointed. That's uh, that's about as much as you're going to get from the elbows, and then the wrists are on a singular ball joint. Yep, single ball joint, no double hinge or anything, and you can kind of tell that the arms are not really loose. I mean, they kind of hold their weight, but they definitely feel um, just a little bit loose. The waist, there is only. A swivel. This I'm kind of disappointed by. They could have easily implemented some sort of uh, extra ball joint in there so you could actually uh, tilt side to side or move downwards or move upwards, but nope. Only a swivel. Hips. The arm at the way there. Yeah, see this, this kind of. There is a swivel and a ball joint. You can kick about that far. Go back. About that far. Pretty decent range of movement in the legs, honestly. You can spread them out about that much until the slash harken pieces get in the way. Knees. Single joints. Don't appear to be. Oh, no, is that. Is that double joints? No, it's just a single joint. But you do get a pretty decent. That's pretty good for a single joint, honestly. The feet. Single ball joint, as far as I can tell. Pretty decent one at that. You get a decent range of. Uh, movement out of it. And then I believe there's also something in the toe as well. Or am I just being crazy? Oh, yep, there's a uh, hinge in the toes. It's not a ball joint, it's a hinge. Hmm, interesting that. And then the actual land spinner is on a hinge and a swivel. So it goes outwards, as you can see there, and it goes up like that. And the wheels don't move! This is a crime, honestly. <laughs> uh, the wheels don't move, they are just uh, solid things. Either that or they're really, really stiff. Um, and that's pretty much it for the articulation for the Conquista. Not bad, but not amazing, honestly. For such a large figure, I was expecting a little bit more, honestly. A little dis pretty disappointed actually thinking about it, especially um, the fact that there's no extra hip articulation, it's only a rotating uh, swivel. And I'm kind of disappointed with the arms because they're just a, a little bit looser. So, rating the articulation, 
it's, like I said, it's eh. It's passable, but it's not perfect. But with that said, let's get on to the accessories when you get this figure, of which you do get quite a lot. So the first accessory you get is a pretty big one. It's the float unit. And that goes on just on the cockpit. Let's see, how does this go on? Uh, oh, hang on. I think... There we go. And it just clicks on to the back of the cockpit like so. And the float unit itself is actually really, really nicely done. Uh, sculpted in this nice red, and you can see there's uh, yellow, gold paint on the wings and then there's green uh, lights on the smaller wings and they can move into the flight position like so. You can spread the wings out like that and it stays pretty well. It doesn't really add any extra weight to the figure as you can see he's uh, standing pretty well without the uh, land spinners for extra support but uh, it's a really nice piece. It's a really uh, big piece actually. And an additional option to the float unit, well not really additional, it's kind of part of this Nightmare's design, is the Hadron Cannon. Uh, this is a separate piece uh, from the float unit so to change them out all you need to do is just pop the float unit off the one slot itself Pop the wings off, and then attach the wings to the hard run cannon piece. And the actual joints on these are pretty stiff, so they're not really going to fall out. As you can hear them as I connect them. It's a little bit finicky getting this thing on, but... Oh. And there is the Hadron Cannon uh, added, and wow, this figure is actually really good at weight distribution. Um, because that's a pretty big piece at the back and it's holding its weight pretty well without the uh, land spinners. But you can see that the Hadron Cannon is very, very nice. It's got some nice uh, sculpted detail for it. It looks really, really good. And I'll show you it, how to deploy it in a minute once I get onto his uh, weapon accessories. But it's really, really good. And actually, I'm really, really surprised that um, it's able just to hold itself in a standing position uh, with that thing on its back. That's really, really impressive, honestly. Weapons accessory wise, of course, you do get the Lancelot's iconic uh, various particle rifle. You get two different versions. One is the completely uh, deactivated mode, which sits on uh, the back of the Lancelot. And the second is the in use mode. Now, in the packaging, it comes uh, in long range mode by default. But what's cool about this uh, piece here is that you can actually set it to um, normal mode if you take off the two barrel pieces. You can see that there's um, gaps for pegs, and I can just slot the barrel back in, like so, and then I can put the barrel covers back on. It's a little bit finicky, but um, it's a really nice uh, feature. Slot it there. There. And there's the various rifle in regular firing mode and you can see it's really really nice they've got some nice uh chrome blue paint going on there and some nice detailing and sculpt throughout and these two uh energy or well, i assume are some sort of energy cylinders can flip in uh like so and it can hold the various rifle with uh this gripping hand as you can see you can hold it pretty well although there is a little bit of weight but you can hold it just fine and then for the deactivated piece, if you attach it to the back, there's a little peg here, and then you just slot it into that little gap there, and it just sits like so. You can actually store the various rifles somewhere on the figure and not just have it um, sitting in a box somewhere in the sidelines. And of course, no Lancelot figure would be complete without the iconic dual MVS swords and these are actually really really nice they're very glossy very nicely sculpted and detailed actually I did not expect them to have this nice uh, gloss to them definitely gives them that uh, glowing energy feel and of course you do get the scabbards to put on the back of the figure they slot into these uh, little peg holes on the back like so not gonna lie they are a little bit to get in there. And you get two for each side. And when not using the MVS sword, you do get these two 
um, for kind of short swords. I'm not gonna lie, I wish they would have had it so it was the full um, deactivated blade that could sit in the scabbard, but these do just fine. And you just pop them into the scabbards like that, and they do the part. And as for gripping the swords, well, he can grip the swords uh, pretty well with these uh, gripping hands. And they're actually uh, just sculpted in the shape of the sword itself. As you can see, he can hold the sword very easily. No problem getting it in there. That looks pretty good. Uh, so yeah, that's his MVS swords. Move on to the last accessory. And the final accessory you get with the Conquista is the ability to pose the slash Harkin pieces on the arms and the hips. Now, the problem I have with the Harkins themselves is that they are only attached with these very small and delicate pegs. Uh, you can see the peg here, it's very, very small. And basically what this means is that any time you, let's say you're posing the arms and you accidentally bump these, they're probably going to fall out and then you need to actually take the arm gauntlet off, which this one's a little bit stiff, to actually put the thing back on. Oh, wow, this one's... Come on. There we go. Um, you have to actually insert the peg back into its slot and it sticks pretty well, not gonna lie, but uh, yeah, not an ideal system. Honestly, I think the robot Damashi uh, Lancelot did this a lot better where it actually had the peg in the middle and it controlled what feature went into the arm gauntlet. Uh, but to pose the Harkin deployed, you get two of these bendable mesh uh, wires, and very very bendable, you can pose them in whatever manner you please. Fortunately you only get two of them, but there is uh, four Harkins, Bandai, clearly can't count. And you basically just slot them into this little hole on the arm, and there's also two on the legs as well. I'm gonna... it's kinda hard to get them in because the wires are so small and... but once you have it in there, as you can see, it goes quite far, and it looks pretty good, not gonna lie. If you were to have this posed in a more kind of dynamic position, um, you could actually have the Harkin being fully deployed. Like I said, you only do get two of these, which is unfortunate, because uh, there is four slash Harkins, but it's nice nonetheless, considering we don't usually get this ability with most Nightmare Frame figures. Lastly, moving on to accessories that are not technically weapons, uh, you do get a little minifig, which is Suzaku in his pilot suit. Not a bad little thing, the facial details are there, if I can get it to focus. Yeah, it looks like Suzaku, uh, it's got you know his pilot suit markings and everything, it looks really really good. And uh, of course this obviously sits in the cockpit, so you open up the cockpit. Oh, of course, now that I want to put the pilot in, you don't want to come out. That's... well, that's that's great. <laughs> come on, there we go. And then you pop the hatch off. Well, actually no, I could probably just pull the uh, seat out and then it'd be fine. And then you just stick Suzaku in between that little peg. I presume. And he should... Yeah, there we go. And you can see Suzaku is sitting in the Lancelot and you pop him back in there. There we go. And he is in the cockpit of the Lancelot and he seems to... seems to be sitting just fine. I don't hear him rattling about in there. So, yeah, it's a little Suzaku minifigure. Pilot minifigure. Nice little feature, honestly, um, considering we don't usually get them with most Nightmare Frame figures or even just mechs in general, honestly. So yeah, you do get a bonus Suzaku figure piloting in the cockpit. And the final real accessory you get with the Lancelot Conquista is a display stand for it posed in the air. Now, the stand itself is, honestly, it's pretty meh. Feels sturdy enough, holds its own weight, but um, the connector joint is a little bit odd because you actually have to take it out and then pose it in the direction that you want. And having the Conquista on it in full force is um, the actual height it gets off the ground is pretty abysmal to be honest. I would probably, if you want to pose this in a air position, maybe consider using like Bandai's Act 5 mechanic stand or something that has a little bit more height to it because this is honestly, yeah, it's pretty bad honestly.
Lastly, you do also get extra hand pieces for the Conquista. You get two slightly at rest open uh, palm hands and then an extra gripping hand for the MVS sword or various. And the hand pieces themselves are pretty interchangeable. Uh, they are made of a slightly softer uh, plastic and they, they come out really, really easily. Not really much force required. Single mushroom ball peg. Just pop it into the hand like so. Pretty easy. And lastly, I'm just going to show you how to deploy the Hadron Cannon in its firing position. It works pretty much seamlessly like it did in the original anime series. You flip this upwards like so, it goes like that. It's on a hinge and swivel by the way, so it gets a lot of uh, decent movement. You flip the barrel open, and then you take your various rifle in uh, this position, and put that into the cannon. You should hear an audible uh, click, like so. And then you just stick this hand here, this uh, slightly gripping hand, onto the handle like so and there you go the hadron cannon this big massive weapon is now fully deployed and it looks really really nice not gonna lie if you've bought this figure you're probably going to do a lot of your posing with this uh weapon deployed it looks really really good and there's even some nice detailing on the hadron cannon itself you can see the kind of chamber markings of the barrel there it's just it's a great accessory not gonna lie it's awesome so my final thoughts on the mechanical complete model lancelot conquista are simply this this figure is great for its sheer amount of detailing and sculpt work with what you get it captures the second carnation of the lancelot nightmare frame very very well with its fantastic sculpting work and nice paint application applications throughout. Even though the paint applications is very little and most of it is molded, what you do get on this figure is very very well done. The golden accents definitely stand out and are nice and clean. Additionally, the amount of accessories you get with this figure is also a plus. You do get some very nicely sculpted and painted weapons like the MVS swords, the awesome Hadron Cannon and even some bonuses like the Suzaku piloting minifigure to display in the cockpit. That being said, however, this figure does have its shortcomings with it being a rehash of the buildable model kit. For one, the amount of articulation that you get with this figure is honestly lacking. With it being a large scale figure as well, I was certainly expecting more from places that the articulation just wasn't there, particularly in areas like the waist, where it's only a single swivel and no type of ball joint for more dynamic posing at all. Additionally, my particular figure has also suffered from some loose joint problems, particularly in areas like the arms and the feet, areas of the body which are crucial for posing, but sadly, these sometimes struggle to hold their own weight in situations. The final thing to take into consideration is its price tag. Now, I was able to get this figure for relatively cheap off of Ami Ami's pre-owned site. However, in most cases in the second-hand market, via it new or pre-owned condition, I've seen this figure go for £50 or your regional equivalent. And honestly, it's very hard for me to recommend this figure at that asking price when you take into consideration some of its cons, particularly in the articulation, the loose joints, and also the stand that you get pre-packaged with this figure. If you're looking to make this your premium Lancelot figure for your display shelf, I honestly feel your money could be better spent elsewhere. That being said, however, it is definitely a premium edition of the Conquista, and if you are not content with the in-action offshoot series Conquista figure, I would definitely consider trying to find this figure for a decent price if you can. Overall, I'd say the Lancelot Conquista complete model is a good figure, it just has some shortcomings with the fact that it was a repackage of the model kit. But anyway guys, that has been my review of the Mechanical Complete Model Lancelot Conquista. Let me know your thoughts. Do you have this figure? Are you planning on buying this figure? What do you make of it? Let me know in the comments. Consider liking this video and consider subscribing to the channel. And let me know what you would like to see me review in the future. My name has been VX5Voltage. Have a nice day and I will catch you later.